Oh my god, good, it worked. <laughs> I'm having like, I go to stream in this group and I am like no longer in the group. <laughs> I'm no longer in the group, I just got one of our admins to save us. Weird Facebook glitches going on. So here I am, I want to talk about relationships and alignment once I find this video and get started. So, give it a second. I'll let some people find me. It's a really good energy um, to be doing energy work today, so I kind of had to get on feed. Alright, so we're doing this space storm. Hi, good. I'm like, I'm waiting for a couple people to get here. I'm always real awkward in this group because we're still building it right now. So I'm always like, hang on. I'll wait till some people on here. I don't like talking to myself. Um, so give it a second. I'm going to talk about relationships and alignment because we really do have a lot going on with this ascension. And, you know, I know people have really lost the meaning of life, but I will tell you about the nature of reality and why this hot matrix was even made. It was for Source became aware. I always tell this story. It's one of my favorite stories. Source became aware, this infinite energy, we call it intelligent infinity at times, right? This infinite energy became aware of itself. What happened was it branched off and created another, right? And then another and another and another. And here we are, aspects of that same, you know, fractalized energy. We really are divinity experiencing itself in the human form. And, you know, all that, the nature of this reality is all about is love. People seem to have forgotten that. Right? The reason why Source wanted to experience itself with another was to love itself on very deep meaning, love, deep levels, right? And we seem to have forgotten that around here because a lot of this reality was designed to keep us from love. <laughs> it was designed in such a way, right? You can see how the system works with their, everything they have going on. And, you know, we have a lot that's been blocking us from love. I'm over here and I'm trying to do this relationship. And, you know, it's, at least I know that I suck at love, right? At least I know everyone thinks they're so amazing at love. All right. Okay. I think everyone in this matrix has a lot of lessons that we still have to, um, you know, progress into when it comes to love. The things blocking us in our relationships, the things we have to work on with ourselves. And I know everyone, you know, um, feels at a good place healing around here it seems but I'm going to continue my healing journey probably infinitely after the ride I had in this matrix and that's what the universe expects of us that we're not you know stopping our learning and that we're continually evolving growing learning a lot of people are like okay I'm enlightened I'm done no this is our school we need to continue forward and progress right um so you know this has always been about love every a lot of your lessons center around relationships, you'll notice, in this matrix. That people, especially in the third dimension, tend to go through a lot of relationships and things like that, you know, in their stay in Earth school. I want to talk about relationships and alignment today. So, you know, when you are asleep, you are not yourself. <laughs> Let's just say you are not yourself. You're disconnected from your soul in a lot of ways, your higher self. And you're kind of just responding to what your subconscious is creating. We can't even find ourselves, at least, you can't convince me of that, till we wake up, okay? You're not even going to be yourself. It took me so long to become who I am, right? I went through many roles and jobs and trying things out and different experiences and lessons, right? Going through this journey. And this has always been a journey about finding who you are. I find that a lot of the relationship issues we see are when someone is living in just that ego personality, like think when people are asleep, right? They are just that ego personality. They don't even know who they are and they're disconnected from themselves. So what I see in relationships is you'll have two people and they're in complete ego personality mode and they go ahead and they get in a relationship. And then, you know, you tend to live together and shit gets real. And then you tend to find out who that person really is underneath. And then people are like, oh, I don't even like that person. They liked the ego role illusion that they fell in love with. That when you get to that core of the person, they're usually not who they seem when you're in that type of programming too. We have to become authentic with ourselves before we can be authentic in a relationship on whatever level, right? So for me, I did a lot of journeying on my own, going through the unknown, and I had to because I was finding myself on deep levels. And this has always been a journey where I'm colliding into myself time and time again. Now, as we're becoming spiritual and having this awakening, we're doing this inner work. 
When you're asleep, you're at a very low frequency. It depends on where you're at, but I don't care. You're at low frequencies. You're in these third dimensional frequencies and they're low vibe. You're going to draw low vibe experiences to you and low vibe people to you. If you ever had any relationship issues when you're asleep, there you go. Who are you going to draw to you when you're drawing low vibrational people or entities to you? It's never going to be good, right? Um, so we tend to, to go through this experience and had some bad experiences and love a lot of us. So it tends to affect our programming. Because then we have this fear like things might go wrong in our next relationship. We don't want it to go like that again. I hope I don't get that person again, right? And things like that. These are things that tend to affect our programming. It's important to remember, I like to think of the people watching my videos as people who have had spiritual awakenings or going through this spiritual ascension, right? So, you know, you have to remember that once you wake up, it changes your frequency. I'm going up in frequency to the point where I'm losing a lot of people fast around me. People watching my journey would never get it, so I don't even try to talk about it, right, what I'm going through right now. But I will tell you that I've been doing a lot of inner work at some very sacred sites on my energy, like just doing everything I can. I do this Ascension Hardcore, and because of that, it's changing my frequency fast. Um, so as I'm changing my frequency, I pretty much just lost everyone around me again, which I'm okay with. <laughs> I'm going to keep going forward on my path and I have to. I can't let, you know, the people that can't keep up with me or are not doing the inner work hinder my spiritual progress. And I think this is the problem a lot of people have. So people are in these relationships going on. And this is everything that I'm watching happen around us too. People have these relationships. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be friendships. And a lot of the people around you are not doing this spiritual work that we're into. And so what's going to happen is we're raising our frequency and the people who are not doing the work are going to stay where they're at and we're going to continue to elevate and what's going to happen is we're going to fall out of resonance with these people and you know the people that you could have been really close with like your family members they you could start to be irritated by them they could be irritated by you we start to repel people so our vibration is always attracting things right be it magnetizing things and repelling things that are no longer a frequency match to us um, so as we're becoming more authentic and doing this inner work, we're falling out of frequency with the people that aren't, that are not in energetic alignment. And it can be kind of a chaotic process, right? Because usually, you know, when people leave our lives, it could be with drama, it could be, you know, not on good terms and things like that. I've had it happen before. I've been doing this spiritual ascension for a few years now. And I have had, since my awakening, I'm in my third relationship since I woke up. And um, in the past maybe five years, right? So I'm going through it now where I was in my first relationship and this was someone spiritual but they were not willing to do the things that we do for ascension and it wasn't like a bad thing I just fell out of frequency and was my path was calling me somewhere else and it was just clear to both of us because we were very spiritual that you know our our lessons were over with each other we were at a certain point it was really good for us and we were learning a lot I learned a lot of spiritual stuff from this person and vice versa but then it was like we no longer had any knowledge to give each other right and my path moved me on and here I am and you know I'm working on this spiritual union over here which is beyond words it's very divine how our past even collided and how I didn't see it at the time because I'm in my own experience and doing my job and stuff like that but looking back now, I see that the entire year the universe was working on colliding us together and bringing us together. I went through a lot of effort to do that. So, you know, there's a very divine energy going on in this relationship. If you have love with the right person, you both have to have an open heart chakra. I think that's the trick around here, right? If you have a relationship with the right person, it is meant to recharge you, to uplift you, to let you on fire, right? And if you're with someone who doesn't have that open heart chakra, let alone crown chakra, it's going to drain you every time. Oh, I love it. I saw a fairy. I <laughs> know. I have the craziest energy over here. I missed my day off almost, but I had to get on here, right? <laughs> and anyway. Okay, so um, if you are with the wrong person, it will drain you. This is where we see a lot of people are awake and having sex with someone asleep. I have seen a lot of research to indicate that's the worst thing you could ever do. Have a spiritual awakening and have sex with someone that is not awake because we don't understand when we have sex we are giving our we're opening up our life force and I got ringing in my ears we're opening up our life force energy to that person they can access all of our energy that's all we have here if you get depleted in life force energy I'm trying to tell my boyfriend this you will rapid age and die <laughs> like and die like it will kill you rapid age you you need that life force energy to live so if you're having sex with someone that is asleep and they are not awake they're gonna be draining your life force energy it's going to be affecting your frequency more than you know. A lot of people might not even notice, right? 
a lot of people might not notice this stuff. Not everyone can feel energy. Not everyone has these abilities, I know, right? Not everyone can um, feel the same things, you know, like we have different abilities. So people don't notice, right? But they're noticing when their whole lives, when they're, they're with someone that they call the narcissist or someone toxic for them. And they're noticing when suddenly their entire world is falling in and everything in it and everything's going to shit. And they're getting crazy lessons or getting sick. That life force energy is what you need to be living and creating your reality. It's like the most valuable thing you hold. So we see a lot of things going on with sexuality, whether it's on TV programming us, the way we've been programmed to view it, the religion, <laughs> the things that we learn going through the matrix that programmed us a certain way about sex, right? Um, so we really need to look at sex in a very spiritual way. We need to be with someone on our level, like spiritually and physically and vibrationally. Um, so, you know, as you keep doing this in a work, a lot of times it's going to kill your relationship, right? If you guys were ever getting along and then you start to do this spiritual work and the other person isn't keeping up with you, you could fall out of frequency and you're doing double work. So we see the people that are awake and they're with someone to sleep and this person's doing no work. You're going to be doing double work. I know all about it. You're going to be doing double work just to sustain your frequency where it should be on its own. So we get in these relationships and we don't realize that, you know, we're working double as hard, but most people aren't understanding this and they're not doing that work. So what happens is if you're with the wrong person, it's like having a weight connected to you. It will hold you on their timelines, in their reality, and to them energetically. Once you have sex with someone anyway, you get courted. There are cords involved with a lot of things going on in this trail. I don't want to get into that topic. We'll do it another day. But you get courted. So you could have sex with someone. It could be a one day stand. It could be a relationship. It doesn't matter. You go off with your life or, you know, you go back on with your work or whatever. It doesn't matter. That person can then drain your energy from far away. <laughs> yeah, people are having sex and not cutting their cords. I couldn't even imagine because, you know, this is just reality to me. And then that person, like it could be someone you don't know good or you are in a relationship, well, it doesn't matter to me. They're able to siphon your energy from far away just thinking about you, whatever it is they're doing. Um, so sex is very powerful. It can destroy us if you're doing it with the wrong people. It will destroy you energetically. We see everyone getting sick around here, right? These systems are designed to make us sick and to take our energy and to drain us on very large scales. People um, couldn't even comprehend it out around here. So sex in relationships with the wrong people tend to destroy you, right? Um, this was not how love was designed. We see love is now a control drama. And that's just the average in this kind of third dimensional world. And it was never meant to be like that. Love was meant to liberate. These things were meant to liberate um, on very real levels. So it's very, very important that if you are having sex, that you're doing it in a space of love with a heart chakra open. We don't realize that sex can open portholes to the other realms too. I always say that, right? You could be having sex with the wrong person and opening negative portholes and you're not even aware of it. Everyone cries about reality and where, where's all this stuff coming from, right? Um, we need to learn to be more careful with our own energy because we created this whole world and no one else right here. So, you know, and vice versa, you could be doing it and it could be the most powerful meditation ever that's opening all of your chakras and opening higher dimensional portholes for ascended beings to come through. Um, so sex is like the most powerful energy, you know, in the world. Um, that Kudalini energy is really, really powerful. Um, I'm still exploring it over here. We're exploring this energy, right? <laughs> and it's very, very powerful though. Um, like it's the most powerful energy ever. I said, this is as close as you're gonna get to source, not in a church, probably, you know, merging into spiritual union on some lines. Um, we've been working our whole lives to try to attain these things because I believe that when you ascend, you would choose to come together with the other aspect of you that you're in vibrational alignment with. Um, I'm kind of past the labels with everything, but I am doing a spiritual union. And this is someone that you would be vibrating on the exact same frequencies with all the time. So even if you weren't around them and you're both going through your journeys, it would be very apparent that you would have always been, you know, tuned into them telepathically. Yes. You would have such a strong connection that if, you know, this other aspect of you, your flame was in pain, you would feel it wherever you are doing your lessons and you're always going to be connected on such a soul level. And we're about to see a lot of these spiritual unions um, come into fruition around us. And the thing is, is that they can't happen if you're in the wrong relationship. We can never start something new holding on to the old one. We need to get rid of the old first, you know, something I had to do on my lesson too, right? Um, so we can never, you know, do that. We have to do what we need to do and become whole on our own and get rid of the garbage in our lives and do a lot of purifying before we can get to that point. Um, you know, hi, Catherine. 
Catherine's getting promoted to admin of this group. Someone needs to add her because I just went to come in here and do a live video and it was like you're kicked out of the group. <laughs> I didn't even know that the creator could be. They used to not be able to be. Red flags with Facebook. You're getting promoted. Hi, good morning. I'd love is always a reflection if you have issues. If you have issues like I don't even know, people are coming to me all sorts of issues, right? Any kind of issue then you're going to get that reflected in your lessons to get rid of it. This has always been a purifying process. I describe art school as you get slammed around enough and hopefully all the shitty qualities get drilled out of you by the universe with your individualized lessons geared just for what your soul needs, right? And that's really the process I went through. And now I'm, you know, progressing into these divine places. Um, and I'm always amazed at where we're headed, the future of humanity with this ascension and the new body type and just how profound it is. How are you guys' love lives? Everyone's like, oh, I'm great. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's look at the planet realistically. We have some healing to do. We just have some healing to do. Trust me, we could be having way better love experiences. Um, that's what the universe wants to do. It doesn't want to do prison planet. It just wants to be experiencing self, love with another on so many levels. We need to come back to unconditional love. People have the wrong idea about this. They're like, oh, I have to love the toxic person unconditionally, even though they've been treating me like shit my entire existence. I've been with them. I know. Dark's always twisting around these spiritual notions to imprison us, right? Um, you know, you want to um, love unconditionally, but you need to love yourself more. If you're not loving yourself first, your partner never will. So learn how to love yourself. If you're with the wrong toxic person, it's going to get real fucking bad with this ascension. <laughs> the energy in the planet. If you're already with someone toxic, you're not noticing. It might get more and more intense for you, making you have to leave. Because I'm seeing it happen all around us. And people that are in these toxic relationships, these are souls that, you know, we've been trying, we've been needing to liberate from. They're enslaving you. They're keeping you stuck in this place on a loop, you know, learning with people that are toxic for you. So with this ascension, we're going to have to liberate from the things not serving us. And that goes for relationships too. How is a relationship serving or not serving you? How is it making you feel? Are you thinking negatively about your relationship? This is a good indicator I'm thinking this morning, right? How can we tell if our relationship is good for us and uplifting us or toxic? What kind of thoughts are you having about it? Are you thinking like, you know, you miss this person, you love them, or are you thinking, you know, fuck me, I can't wait to get away from this guy later. <laughs> Just kidding. What kind of thoughts are you having though? Are you having negative thoughts about your partner? If you ever are, that's a red flag that this is a toxic situation or it has become toxic. You need to understand that clearly relationships never start out toxic, right? They're all love and light at first, right? And then they easily can become toxic. So if you're having negative thoughts about someone you're with or dating or whatever, for sure, red flags, this is toxic to you at this point. If we're thinking negative thoughts about anything, this is a toxic situation, whether it's your job, relationship, anything in your life, get rid of it because it's causing your body stress that you don't need. Our thoughts control our reality. And if we're thinking negative thoughts about anything, it will draw negative things to our life. So it's becoming toxic fast. Indicators is toxic. More inner work. Let's see. I'm just chilling for a minute. I'm going to try. I think I'm trying to decide if I'm doing a real card feed. Oh, I wanted to say there's a lot of people. We're done tagging people in these areas. <laughs> if you're in this, because I'm going to put this on YouTube after. If you're in this Facebook Tantric Revolution group, um, we have like these four class spaces. See the pin post about the payment. Um, I'm going to, I try to bribe people to do what they got to do. I'm going to be doing um, Kudalini activations. I know Kudalini Reiki is coming up big time. I'm, Get, just got my boyfriend doing it because someone else just ordered it. So, you know, I'm having this emphasis on Kudalini energy during this time with these space storms, right? Maybe we should be working with Kudalini energy. So next feed on Kudalini energy. And um, I'm going to be doing Kudalini activations. I'm not sure if today or, you know, next week or whatever. But I'm going to be doing them. When I do the activations, I only do them on paid people that pay their yearly energy exchange, which is pretty low. Um, cause I try to do tons of activations so you get your money's worth on the space. Like I'll do at least a few, you know, every so often. So I'm doing Kudalini activations for the people that paid for some incentive if you didn't pay. <laughs> and you guys know that it's 33 pounds, which is $44 American. I get you got real shit, but I like to think this is a good energy exchange of me. I try to pour a lot of real good vibes out. <laughs> if you know me, right? 
So see the pin post if you didn't pay your thing because I want everyone to get activated. I'm going to start doing a lot more activations. They really help with your ascension. It's how I got where I am. Energy work, if you know me. <clears throat> I'm going to training this weekend too that I'm so thrilled about. I'll be off grid Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to some really fucking epic training. Um, and it's going to be real hot with my boyfriend. He'll are training and I can't wait. I love playing school, right? So for sure, I'm focusing on these activations only because it's what we need with this ascension. I had to do the same progress and I'm always doing them over here on ourselves and my boyfriend. They really, really help. So I'm for sure going to be doing um, Kudalini activations in this space. I was just going to say bye. I'm leaving for the weekend. <laughs> I'm scared. And I'm just saying hi to you guys. and sending out good vibes. We got like the craziest fucking energy on the way. I have to. I'm getting real excited, right? We have the craziest energy about to come and just kick this planet off. And I can't wait. It's already hitting. You can probably already feel it. Um, so try to flow and vibe in it. I'm doing tons of water. I just clean. I'll tell you guys how to handle this storm, right? Expert level storms. All right. I cleaned my house real good, right? Good saging, good actual cleansing, you know, getting organized. I'm drinking a ton of water. I'm doing the usual. I do self-care. But when I have these storms, I don't lay around. I gotta like flow around, so I'm doing my usual salt baths, nature, unplugging more, meditating, and things like that, and Reiki. Um, before I get off of here, I am doing my next feed <coughs> tomorrow. Oh yes, manifest. I'm doing my next feed tomorrow, and I'm doing a special event because we have this blue moon this weekend. I've been waiting for like six months for it, and I think I get it for my birthday. Because I just have my birthday and the blue moons this month, like May. I was waiting for this blue moon we were having this year. And perfect. It aligns with my birthday. We're in Taurus and my element. It's my favorite time of year. So we have this blue moon. But you're figuring out we have a lot of galactic influences and energies hitting this planet. I was telling my boyfriend, I don't know what happened, but they started trashing the earth so bad. And violating the Earth's free will to a point where the first time in an entire cycle, aliens can now intervene. They weren't allowed to free will. Where they're not allowed to, only allowed to do certain things. And now it puts things on a different playing field, right? So we have this amazing galactic energy sweeping in. I'm for sure going to be using it for my job tomorrow. I'm doing a big live feed, um, a blue star healing feed. And I'm just going to really quick get into it. That, you know, lots of ancient places such as Egypt, the Mayans, the natives were very connected to these places galactically, Atlantis, we can look throughout time, right? And this is an amazing time with these gateways open, with this space storm energy that we can connect to, you know, these places. And I'm very connected with uh, several of the blue stars, right? And I teach blue star healing. So I am doing um, a blue star healing activation to connect galactically. And, you know, some of the things that are good about that are it helps you redesign your DNA templates. It connects you to galactic masters, right? It really just can do so many crazy things for your body. So I do have an event on my personal page and um, a link for the activation. I'm going to start spamming my groups. So I'm doing this live feed tomorrow. Everyone's like, what time? This is me. <laughs> I can't translate over to your time continuum, my tribe. But sometime, you know, noon time and above. So I'll do it when people are more awake. Probably noon to, to two my time. Who knows? When I feel like it. So tomorrow afternoon my time. So you guys will probably be up. I'm going to do a big feed. And I'm doing this activation through my site. If you need more information, come find me. I'm always putting the links everywhere, right? For sure, recommending this activation I'm doing tomorrow. I'm doing this big event, and then I'm disappearing for the weekend to do this healer training. And it's fucking epic, and I can't wait. So for sure, um, make sure that you're creating more fun experiences. This is the best time to be manifesting. I always am trying to use it um, for my videos and my work and stuff like that. All right, love and light.